Amen. <laughs> so thank you, Elder Jones. Let's go to the Word. Y'all, y'all ready for the Word? Yes, sir. Amen. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter number 2. Here at True Friendship Church, we, we don't always follow the outline. It's got the same outline every Sunday. So if you show up at 920, you might just catch the beginning of my sermon. You might show up at 905 and I might be up preaching. However the Lord moves, that's the way we're going to flow with them. Amen? John chapter number 2, beginning at verse number 1, is the reading of God's word. We praise God for those people who are viewing us on YouTube tonight. Amen. <laughs> on the third day, there was a wedding at Canaan in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars that were for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. And when the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, that means when they don't got wasted, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Yes, yes. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Canaan and Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, they went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days. Let's go back to verse number six, six through nine, and it's something that I want you to catch there. Now there were six stones, water jars. Now there were six stone water jars that were that were for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. <laughs> fill the jars with water. They filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. Amen. Amen. And when the master of the feast tasted the water that had now, or that now had, or now become wine. The water now become wine. That's all I want to read. To read a pull out of point. This passage is just so filled with revelation and spiritual truth that it's kind of hard for me to title this. So I'm going to do something that I rarely do. I'm going to have a topic, and then I'm going to have a subtopic. Right. Because I'm really going to be all over the place in this story. But I'm going to try to zoom in on one thing in particular. My topic is the wedding in Canaan of Galilee. That's my topic. But my subtopic is the transformative two. The transformative two. Yeah. Amen. You may be seeing it. The transformative two. Somebody shout the transformative two. The transformative two. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to go before the throne, let us put our mind on Jesus. This is the place that you can receive your healing, your breakthrough, or anything you need from God. 
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this intimate moment to get into your word. God, remove every distraction. Remove everything that might cause us not to be able to hear your word. God, this is your place of refuge. This is, your, this is your place that we receive a healing and receive a breakthrough. So God, have your way in this place. Move from door to door, from corner to corner, from chair to chair, that somebody will receive a breakthrough, that someone will receive a manifestation of your glory today, that somebody will experience you like never before. Have your way in Jesus' name. Come at the table and sit down with us. Communicate with us yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let us feel your spirit move yes. in this place. Yes. We thank you in advance. You. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Yes. And we all shout, Amen. 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 Elder Jones, you may be seated. The transformative two, but we really talk about the wedding yes. and Cana of Galilee. No occasion can compare to a wedding ceremony. Yes. Lady C and I are always honored when we receive an invitation to witness a wedding ceremony. Yes. I suppose that Lady C and I, we love weddings because God himself loves weddings. Yes. Especially those weddings that he ordained. Amen. Amen. The Bible from cover to cover, from book to book, uh -huh. from Genesis to Revelation, yes. speaks of several weddings. Yes. The, the first wedding is found in the book of Genesis, uh -huh. which is the book of beginnings. This wedding that I'm referring to took place in a paradise, if you will. The name, the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter number 2, verses 21 through 24, God put Adam to sleep. And from Adam's rib, he, one of his rib, he formed Eve. And he woke up Adam, and Adam woke up, and Eve's father, who is God, uh -huh. brought Eve to Adam. Amen. And at the altar, Adam said, this is bone of my bone, yes. flesh of my flesh. Yes. She should be called womb man, yes. womb man, because she was taken out of a man. Amen. Look at that vow at the altar at the Garden of Eden. And Adam said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Amen. Look at that first wedding, y'all, in the Bible, yes. in the Garden of Eden. How can you forget this next wedding that when God told a prophet to marry a prostitute? When God told Hosea to marry a prostitute, a harlot, a whore. And God told the prophet Hosea, I want you to go marry a harlot. A prostitute, yes. a hoe, yes. and she, he did, and they could see she he married a, a harlot named Gomer, and they had a son. Yes. And the reason God told the prophet to marry a prostitute is to it's a metaphor to show us that the Lord was Israel or is Israel's husband, yes. Yes. and the Israelites is God's bride. Yes. And whenever the Israelites worship false gods, they are committing spiritual adultery yes. against their own husband. Yes. 
The husband that brought them out of bondage. The husband that brought them out of slavery. The husband that brought them out of Egypt. The husband that brought them through the wilderness. And anytime they worship other gods, they are committing spiritual adultery. Yes, sir. And so God told the prophet, I want you to marry a hoe. So that can be a picture to so people can see how it is to be married to an unfaithful woman. Oh, 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 oh. That's us. Because anytime you don't do anything God's way, anytime you lean to your own understanding, anytime you rely on your job, anytime you rely on other resources rather than God, you are committing spiritual adultery on your dog. So while you are talking about a prophet that, that married a prostitute, you should think how God feels when you are unfaithful to him. The last wedding that's going to take place in history yes. is found in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter number 19, All right. verse number 7 through 9 says, Let us be glad and rejoice All right. and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come. <laughs> and his wife have made herself ready yes. and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints mm -hmm. and he said unto me right blessed are they which are called unto the wedding supper of the lamb and he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Mm -hmm. yes. Just like the Israel or the Israelite is God's bride, mm -hmm. we are Jesus' bride. Amen. Because what's going to happen at this marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus is coming back. For his church. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The church that he purchased with his own blood. Yes. He's coming back. Yes. And when he comes back, we're going to have a wedding. Yes. It's going to be the last wedding in history. It's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's going to be the marriage of Jesus. Those who have been purchased and bought with the price, guess what, y'all? We're going to a wedding. It's going to be the best wedding you ever seen. Let me talk about a wedding in the Bible days so you can get a clear understanding of where we're going this morning. Amen. See, it, it, a, the weddings or a marriage in the Bible, they were orchestrated or planned by parents before the child was even born. That's right. Don't miss that. That's right. Most parents in the Bible had already arranged their children to get married to someone before the child even came to planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And in Ephesians chapter number one, verse number four, it says, according as he have chosen us in him, before, before the foundation yes. of the world. Yes, mm. So before we were even created in our mother's womb, yes. God had already chosen us. Yes. I'm going somewhere, stay with yes. yes. And so when the child finally arrives to planet Earth and they get of age, the arrangement that the parents had made, the little boy goes to the girl and now they become engaged. We call it engaged. The Bible says betrothed. Now they are betrothed to one another. And when they are betrothed, that means they are now in a legal contract, a legal government, a legal agreement that says, I'm your husband and you are my wife. Mm. I am your husband 
and you are my wife. And my mom and my dad and your mom and your dad, well, they had arranged that before we were even born. And now since we are of age, I come to make a legal contract, a legal uh, uh, agreement to show the world in you that I'm your man. I'm going somewhere, say with me. In the second Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 2, it, it reads, it, it says that, uh, for I feel a divine jealousy for you. God said, I'm jealous of you. I don't want nobody else to have this except for me. Just like I'm a jealous man, I'm going to say. I'm a jealous man. I'm the only man that I want CC to have or let CC to have. And God said, I feel the same way about you. I'm the only God that I want you to have. Hallelujah. You don't rely on anybody else. I'm divine jealousy. Mm. Since I betroll you to one husband. That's Jesus. God said, before you even showed up, I had already arranged this marriage. For you to be married to one husband, yes. that is Jesus, to present you as a pure vir version to Christ. Right. When Jesus comes back, y'all, I hope you're following me. He's coming back with a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He's coming back for a pure church. He's coming back for a pure group of believers. And God said, that's why I had a day before the foundation of the world for you to be married to Jesus yeah. and you to be pure and holy. Yeah. Are y'all following me so far? I'm feeling good already. Yeah. Now, now the next step after the parents arrange the marriage, the children get of age, they make that legal contract to one another, the man, little boy, the little girl, the man or woman, to be betrothed, they are now in a legal contract. Yes. Now, after that, what happened is, what happened is, the husband returns home. Mm -hmm. The man goes home. Yes. But the woman yes. goes back to her father's house. Yes. Yes. But here's the key. Yes. Although the man is at home, he's preparing his house yes. for the bride. Yes. But get this now. Although we live in separate places for a year, uh -huh. and the woman is still living with her daddy, uh -huh. she is still my responsibility. Yes, uh -huh. Oh, y'all know uh -huh. And Jesus said in John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. Uh -huh. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, I'm men and mansion. If it were not so, I would have died. I would have told you, I go. We are engaged to Jesus. But Jesus right now, he's away. Preparing our mansion. He's getting our house ready. God, I wish I had a church. He's getting our mansion ready. So when he come back and give us for the wedding, we have somewhere to go. The husband is living in a separate house preparing the house for his bride and the bride is still living with her daddy. The husband is still responsible for her, his wife. Right. And God, Jesus, if you will, yeah. is still taking care of us. Yeah. Oh, doesn't he still provide for us? Yeah. Isn't he still making a way out of nowhere? Isn't he still a bridge over trouble water? Isn't he a shepherd? So y'all, the next step of the biblical weddings in the Bible. Yes. After a year, after the husband is preparing the mansion, and a year goes by, no sex and anything like that. Now it's time for the wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
The man is coming back. The groom is coming back yes. to get his bride. Yes. <laughs> and the bride is getting ready for the wedding. Yes. And in the biblical days, the spotlight was on the groom, not the bride. Yes. Yes. You know, at the wedding now, the bride, in our culture, the bride gets all the attention. Yes. Nobody was looking at me at the wedding. <laughs> Nobody was looking at her. You know? Come on, somebody. Amen. But in the Bible days, yes. the spotlight was on the groom. Amen. Because the groom and his family was responsible for the wedding. Yes. And the wedding lasts for a long time, not just for one day. Sometimes it went on for weeks, yes. days, and weeks. But it depends on how wealthy the groom daddy was. And that determined how long the reception would last. How long the wedding was, would last. Yes. If the groom daddy was poor, it would only last for about two days. But if he were rich, it would last for at least about a month. It depends on the wealth of the groom's daddy. And when Jesus come back, and he finally come to get us. Yeah. And we're going to be, Revelation chapter number 19 said we're going to be, um, go back to Revelation, said we're going to be clothed and fine linen. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. With a white garment, a uh, uh, white, clean and white. We're going to be pure. We're going to be nice. We don't have on a nice wedding gown, if you will. We're going to be red. And guess what? Jesus is going to come. The groom is going to come and get the bride. And the groom, daddy, Jesus, daddy, who is God, yes, he yes. is rich. Yes, yes. The earth is the Lord. Yes, yes. And the Lord is the earth. Yes, yes. So how long this wedding reception is going to last? Uh -huh. 1,000 years. Yes. That's what we call the millennium period. Yes. Yes. How many of y'all in here love weddings? I know yes. I do. I, I really love and I really love the reception. Yeah. Now I'm not that pastor that gonna leave. <laughs> Come on, after I eat, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna look and I'm I might put a rug. Come on, somebody. I, I, I believe it's okay, but Lord, to do a little two step every now and again. <laughs> do you feel what I'm saying? And guess what, y'all? The last wedding in history, we're going to have a reception for 1,000 years. No other reception is going to be able to compare to the reception that we're going to have with Jesus. It's going to be a party for 1,000 years. Your mind cannot even fathom how great this reception is going to be. And with that in mind, with that information about weddings in the Bible, yes. that puts John chapter number 2, verse 1 through 12 in his prophecy. Oh. The wedding in Canaan of Galilee. Yes. Yes. As I discussed a few weddings, a wedding ceremony in the Bible, do not consider it strange that Jesus first Public, public miracle happened at a wedding. Mm -hmm. The first public miracle, Jesus' first public miracle yeah. happened at a wedding. Although we say that this is Jesus' first miracle of his public ministry, mm -hmm. I will submit to you, Elder Jones and Elder Lampton, that this was his first semi-public right. miracle. Ah, my mind. Here we go. No, no, I always mess up your world. <laughs> Pastor Carlos, why do you say that this was a semi, semi, semi public miracle? Well, let's look at the story. Matthew, I'm sorry, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Jesus and his disciples were at a wedding. And the unthinkable happened. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Not that the man 
ex stood up and said, I, he slept with me last night. Come on, come on. Not that the uh, bride got to find with the bridemaids in the back. That, that didn't happen. The unthinkable happened that they ran out of wine. And that was embarrassing because it reflected the groom and his family. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's embarrassing. Yes. If you run out of wine at a wedding, uh-huh. run out of food at a wedding, yeah. because people didn't RSVP, they just showed up. Come on, somebody. So, so, so they ran out of wine, y'all. It's just gone. And when Mary went to get the last scraping at the table, Mm. dinner table, she came back and God mama, she sat down at the table. And she whispered and said, Can't you just see that? Y'all know how we do. You know, we get our plate and we just easily sit down and say, Lord have mercy. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. My hour, somebody shout, hour has not yet come. As I was studying this story for this sermon, that phrase, Lady C, in, in the scripture, can you pull that up for me? Uh, John chapter number two, uh, go when he said, my hour has not come, that phrase stood out to me. Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour, hour has not yet come. And I thought about something I thought about Ecclesiastes chapter number three, verse number one, mm-hmm. when the scripture says, "For there is, for to everything there is a season yeah. and a time oh. Oh, yes, yes, oh. yes. to every purpose under the heaven." Yes. So, I think when Jesus said, "My hour, this time, yes. my hour has not yet come," and Ecclesiastes. Teach us to everything there is a season and a time. I believe the Bible is teaching us there is a distinction between season and time. Yes. 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 Lord, help me to teach yes. this morning. Yes. Season speaks of a period of time, yes. but time speaks of an instance when something happened. Yes. Let me pull this out this way because I want you to see that there's a distinction between season uh-huh. and time. Yes. In a few more days, I, I believe June the 21st, I believe that's, is that next Tuesday, I believe, that it's going to be the first day of summer. Mm-hmm. That's season. Yeah. Uh-huh. We have summer, winter, and fall. Those are seasons. Summer, winter, spring, and fall. Those are seasons. But but guess what? Although summer is a season, one holiday in the summer season is the 4th of July. Follow me if you can. So June the 21st, we will enter into the summer season, but it will not be time for the 4th of July. When we end into fall, I think fall happens into uh, fall happens in October, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. So when we enter into October, we will go into the fall season, yeah. but it will not be time for Thanksgiving. That's right. Until yeah. November. Yeah. 
Are y'all following me? Yeah. Winter, that when we enter to December, we'll be into the winter season, but it's not time for Christmas Amen. until December the 25th. Amen. When we get into March or April, I believe we enter into the spring season, but it's not time for Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Just because it's your season doesn't mean that it's your time. It was the it was Jesus' season uh -huh. for him to be the Messiah. Yes. It was his season yes. for him to go to the cross three years yes. later. But it was his season to be the Messiah. But it was that time for him to reveal his identity. Yes. 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 Just because it's your season doesn't mean it's your time to reveal it to other people. Yes. And most of us mess up because anytime you reveal your season to others before it is time, you put your destiny in jeopardy. Yeah. When you know that this is your season, you sit down and be quiet and wait until God tells you it's your time to reveal it to others. When God blesses you, when he gives you something, and when I say blesses you, that doesn't mean financial blessing only. It doesn't mean just money. But when God does something for you, and this is your season to be blessed, it doesn't mean it's your time to tell everybody. That's right. That's right. Jesus said in John 2, he said, my he said, yes, I know you know who I am, mama, a woman, Mary. I know you know who I am, but it's not time for me to reveal my identity to the public. Yeah. Because if they know who I am too early, something might happen to them, what God has planned for my life. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it's your season doesn't mean it's your hour. Mm, I know you can't come in. That's good. So when God is blessing you, you just sit down and take that blessing. Yeah. And wait until God say, now you can tell your son. Yeah. Now you can get up and testify. Now you can tell everybody. See, you talking too early. You talking out of seat. You talking out of time. Yeah. I thank God that it's your season, but it's, it's in your time to tell everybody who you are yeah. and what you got. Yeah. Are y'all with this so far? Yeah. Jesus said, wait a minute, I know this is my season to be the Messiah, yes. but it's not the hour for me to reveal my identity to the public. Yes. Let me jump forward to prove my point. Because when we read the story, the master of the feast did not know where the wine came from. The only people that knew who did it was those people who were close to Jesus, the yes. disciples in the circle. Yeah. They were the only one that knew where the wine came from. But the other people did not know because Jesus said, I cannot reveal to you my identity yet. Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. He said, woman, my hour, somebody shout my hour, yeah. has not yet come. Yeah. And Mary said, I'm not hearing that. She looked at everybody at the table and said, whatever he says, do it. King James Version says, do it. do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever Jesus, the Messiah, tells you to do, do it. And I believe Elder Johnson, Elder Lappin, Sister Regina, Sister Minister Pachel, the Lord wants me to tell you the same thing. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Let me let that soak in. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. It may not make any sense, but do it. It may be, feel strange to obey God's word, but you got to obey his word. It may be strange to leave your native land. But do it. It may be strange. He may tell you to walk around 
a wall seven times. And when you walk around that wall seven times, on the seventh day, the walls will come coming down. God said, but whatever I tell you to do, you just do it. It might be something as strange as dipping yourself down in dirt of water named the Jordan River seven times. But whatever he tells you to do, do it. It may be something as strange as you washing your eyes in the pool of alone. But whatever the Lord tells you to do, you do it. It may be something as strange as leaving your home church for whatever the Lord tells you to do. You do it. Perhaps it may be something like he told me to do to start a ministry with no money. But whatever the Lord will tell you to do, you do it. Can I go a little bit deeper and teach all this for you? It takes faith to obey God's word. Faith is acting like it is so even when it's not so, so that it may be so, simply because God says so. Okay. Faith is acting like it's already done. God, I know you told me to the I heard your voice. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. But whatever you told me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to obey your word and walk by faith. Because if God gave me the word, he has already made provision. He has already went before me. He has already made every crooked place straight and rough place smooth. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, you just do it. You take God at his word. I said you take God at his word. You walk by faith. And not by sight. Don't go by what you can feel. Don't go by what you can hear. Don't go by what you can taste. Don't go by what you can see. But God, if you said it, the just shall live by faith. I'm going to do it. Mary said, told the servants, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And listen, you all, I'm telling you this because I'm telling you what I know. Once you take God at his word, yes. once you obey his word, yes. you will begin to experience God Amen. on a different and deeper level. Yes. 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 Some of you want to experience God, but you don't want to obey. Amen. Amen. I don't want to experience you. I want to have an account with you. But God said, you won't do what I tell you to do. All right. You, you got to walk by faith yes, God. and not by sight. Not God, not God. Whatever he tells yes, sir. Yes, you to do, yes, sir. do it. Do it. Do it. I, we, we, Elder Jones, don't know this, but Lady C does. You all know that the Lord placed on my heart to do something next year at a big place. It's on calls six thousand dollars, and, and, uh, and I'm saying, my like, Lord, I can't do that. I can't do that. But the Lord said, Now, Doreen, how are you gonna preach faith and not live by faith? Come on, somebody. See, 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 what we do is we'll tell others God can do it. But when you come down to you and you don't see the money, you don't see how things are going to work out. When God tells you to do something, you better learn how to get off your butt and just do it. Do it. Look at somebody and say, do it. Do it. Do it. You do it. You do it. <laughs> Keep on, because I can stay there all day. So the title of my sermon is The Wedding in the Kingdom of Galilee. But my subtopic is the transformative two. Yes. Yes. Now let me focus on what I really want to focus on. Yes. And then I'll wrap it up. Yes. So, so now, in verse number six, there were six water jars uh -huh. sitting on the side. Yes. And Brother Marcus, they were made of stone uh -huh. used for the purification of the Jews. 
That means any time the Jews got ready to eat, they washed their hands using the water from out of those pots before and after a meal. They washed their hands yeah. with that water. But Jesus looked over there uh, and just saw those six stones uh -huh. on his side. Yes, Jesus. And Jesus said, go get those six stones. Because what good is having wine, mm. but you don't have nothing to put it in? Yeah. All right. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. So, he said, now, I'm going to do it. Because in the time there's a need, I'm obligated to fulfill it. Yes. 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 Because yes. my God shall supply yes. all, yes. all yes. of my yes. needs. Yes. He won't sometimes yes. give me what I want. But he'll sure enough give me what yeah, I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime I'm in need, yeah. he's going to supply my need. Yeah. I don't know how he's going to do it. Yeah. I don't know when he's going to do yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know that if you need a healer, he's going to give you a healer. Because yeah. anytime you need something, God is obligated to fulfill the need. Yeah. I feel like preaching. Yeah. Yeah. So there were six jars made of stone. Stone. Yeah. That's the two yes. that he can put the wine in. Yes. But but the Bible emphasized that we, there were six stones or water jars. One translation would say water pot. Mm -hmm. Put this stone. The jars were made out of stone. Yes. Yes. Because the, the, one scholar would say the reason that the stone, um, jars or the water pots were made out of stone is because it don't matter how nasty the water may get, it won't contaminate the pots. Yeah. It doesn't matter how nasty the water is in the pot. Yes. But since it is in a stone pot, hallelujah, it won't get the pot that made out of stone nasty. Yes. And then I thought about another scripture. Uh -huh. When Jesus led me and told me to emphasize and look at this stone, uh -huh. I thought about 2 Peter. Uh -huh. uh, chapter number 2, 1 First Peter, chapter number 2, verse number 4, it says, As you have come to him, a living stone. Yeah. That's Jesus. Yeah. Rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. Yeah. Uh oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm talking about this tool. I hope you shout. I hope you feel it like I did. You yourselves, like living stones. Woo! You still not there. Yeah. It doesn't matter how nasty the water is in the stone of the water pot, it won't get the stone dirty. Hallelujah! And the first Peter, chapter number two, verse number four, said that Jesus is the living stone. But we are also strong. It doesn't matter how guilty we may be on the inside. We won't get nasty. Hallelujah. And there's a door sometimes, some things in me that get in me that's not their own godly. Hallelujah. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Can I be honest? I can speak in tongues, but sometimes I might say a little cross word. Empty me, Lord. Yeah. I 
I want to be like an empty pitcher before a full of fountain. If there's anything that's in me that should not be, I want you to empty it out. And when you empty me out, God, I want you to get into me. Yes. Empty me. And then get into me. Yeah. Empty me. Yeah. And then get into me. Yeah. Empty me. And then get into me. Empty me. And then get into me. God, I want more of your spirit. I want more of your anointing. I want more of your glory. Give me anything. That's it. That's it. That's shut up. Empty me out. And fill me up. I'm your chosen vessel. Yeah. I want you to fill me up. I want your glory. I want your anointing. I want your power. I want you to fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. So, he said, now go get those water pots made of stone. Six up. And fill them up. To the brim. They did just that. The next verse says, Lady C. And now, he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master. And so they took it. And when the master of the feast tastes the water, now become wine. Where did this happen? How did this happen? And when did this happen? Because Jesus just gave the instruction to the servant, ser uh -huh. servants. They, they emptied the water pots out, uh -huh. filled it up with water, took the water pots uh -huh. to the master of the feast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they set this water pot down, mm. they drove some out, drew uh -huh. some out. And that is why. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Where did, Where did this happen? <laughs> it happened in the tomb. Wow. Yeah. That's why I titled my subtitle is Transformative Tomb. Mm. Because while the water was in the water pot, yeah. it was transformed. Yeah. Because whatever God put in you, yeah. He wants to transform it. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a church. It happened while they were walking. Uh -huh. Where? In the transformer to two. How? When they were walking. Yeah, yeah. See, God won't do anything for you if you sit down. Come on. Because faith without works is dead. God, I don't see it, but I'm going to take you at your word. And I'm going to walk by faith. And as the servant was walk, servants were walking, this wild water was turned into wine in the transformative tube. Yeah. My God, my God. That's all right. Good. That's good. The transformative tube. Yeah. Transformative tube. So this miracle, you all, is really a miracle of transformation. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God wants us to see what He can do in the life. Want us to see what He can do in the life of His people. Yes. 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 Once you obey His word yes. 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 and walk by faith, my God, my God, my God. Yes. 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 Hallelujah! This miracle, I hope y'all get this. Hallelujah! This miracle is about what He can do in you. Yes. Trans, he wants to do a transformation in you. Yes. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank I'm going to close with this. God told me to tell somebody this and hope you catch this. Thank you, Jesus. Your export mm -hmm. should be greater than his import. Mm -hmm. yes. Your export yes. should be greater than yes. his import. Yes. Uh, because what they put in mm -hmm. to the water pot was water. Yes. But what they got out yes. of the water pot yes. was wine. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. So 
Whatever God put in you, it starts as a seed. Yeah. His word starts as a seed. But he wants you, his word to be transformed in you. That when it comes out of you, it can be wine. The wine symbolizes, Sister Regina, biblically speaking, the wine symbolizes peace. Yes, yes, yes. Prosperity. Yes, yes. Celebration. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. That's what wine symbolizes. Yes. Let me go a little bit deeper. Then I'm going to close. My God, my God, my God. Let me go a little bit deeper. If I really can teach this, if I want like I want to, the water in the transforming the two symbolize the old, God's old way of doing things. Yeah. It symbolize the law. Yeah. That's the war. Yeah. But the wine mm. symbolize Jesus because yeah. he came to do a new thing. What if I told you this morning that God wants to do a new thing in you? Yeah. What if I told you that God wants to begin to transform you? Yes, God. Yes. That He puts something in you. Yes, yes. That He wants to wake up yes. 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 yes, sir. You got a seed in you yes. that hasn't developed. Yes. But faith come by hearing. Yes. And hear about the word of God. Yes. Once this word hit that seed that's in your water by hallelujah, yes. you're going to see a transformation. I'm going to close. I'm going to close with this. I want you to I want you to realize this. And I mentioned this already. I hope y'all been blessed. Yes. Notice. I hope y'all realize this in my head. I can see Jesus just sitting at the table giving instructions. Amen. Because this miracle came by somebody else's hand. Amen. Mm. It was God's or Jesus' word, yes. but it was done by somebody else's hand. Yes. Yes. When you begin to walk by faith and what God has put in you and you begin to transform into Jones, you will begin from your life. God will do miracles through your life. Can you keep on oh no, with me? Somebody praying for a miracle that you got. Take me 
me out. My last point, and I want to say this. Some of God's best work come out of your emptiness. Are y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? Those six water jars uh, made of stones were over there empty. And God said, that's an opportunity for me to do my best work. Lean, I don't know why this is in my spirit this morning, but lean not to your own understanding. Yes, yes, yes. But in all your ways, acknowledge yes. Him. Yes. And He will yes. direct your Yeah. 